Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News. And I have the pleasure to join by Dev Sarni. I mean, massive occasion for Sam Noakes on Saturday night, mate. Yeah, look, this is it. He's uh, 13 fights, 13 wins, 13 knockouts, 100% knockout rate. And now he's got a guy that's never been knocked out, has boxed at a far, far higher class, has been a European champion in the past, but maybe he's a bit older. Let's see. Well, I mean, he is definitely older, but I guess they're kind of thinking that they're, they're going to get him at the right time. But he looks in shape up there. He looks like, uh, you know, he's looking over like, you haven't got me at the right time. I'm still Yvonne Mendy. I want my old belt back. So very, very uh, uh, big occasion for Sam Noakes. Definitely. It's, it's fair to mention the only people who have beaten Yvonne Mendy, like obviously Luke Campbell did repeat that, but obviously Luke Campbell went on to fight for world titles. Mm. I mean, Dennis Berenczyk's going into a uh, going into a world title with Navarrete. I mean, I was just saying to Sam there, a win on Saturday night is massive repercussions on the world stage for him as well. It, it really does. And you can see uh, yeah, just a couple of fights ago, Mendy was in there with Berenczyk. Berenczyk is a, is a Queensbury fighter who's about to, you know, along with K2, is about to challenge for the vacant WBO lightweight title against Navarrete. So... If he wins that, right, and then he's got kind of lightweights lining up within the Queensbury stable, Sam Noakes, if he stands there with a, a British title, a Commonwealth title and a European title, I'd imagine he's probably looking over at the winner of that fight and thinking, hey, I'm not, I'm not far behind, maybe I'll get you this year. Mark Chamberlain will be thinking the same thing as well. So uh, it's a fascinating time and it, it does have an impact on the world stage. If you kind of look at the bigger picture, it could mean a lot. And Sam Noakes... If he does become the first man to stop Yvonne Mendy, even a win's great, but if he knocks him out, that's a big, big statement. Definitely. I do want to touch on Mark Chamberlain before we get on to the undercard of this, of this uh, fight card on Saturday. I mean, obviously, he's on the, he's on the Fury Usyk card, but he's got a very tough fight against Joshua Wahab. I mean, since, until his fight with Liam Dillon, where he lost, he was, I think he was 22-0, 20, 22 knockouts. I mean, massive stage for Mark Chamberlain, obviously, but a very dangerous opponent in the front of him. It will bring out the best in him. I, I love that that fight got made, and I, I was looking at that as well, like the record, like, oh, he's pretty decent. He looks a bit tasty. But, um, look, he's clearly a bit of a favourite with uh, His Excellency, Turkey al We all heard the story about how he ended up getting on the card. Uh, fantastic stuff. And this will bring out the best in him. Having someone come towards him who's got all those knockouts, got a bit of power, can put a bit of fear into him, coming to take his head off, he might get his head taken off himself. Uh, and that's what I would imagine will happen because Mark Chamberlain can crack. He, def he definitely can. I think that uh, that result against Gavin Gwynn proves it as well. We'll talk about the undercard in this fight. I mean, Alloys Jr., Henry Turner, and then I think like one people, one person that everyone's forgetting is Andrew Kane. He's yeah. back from injury as well. Massive fight card on Saturday for uh, Frank Warren and Creasby Promotions. Yeah, look, I'm looking forward to seeing Andrew Kane come back. You know, you mentioned the other guys, but... Andrew Kane, um, for me, he, you know, he's out of that Everton Red Triangle gym. He's with Nick Ball, Brad Strand, and he took that loss to Yonut Baluta, which could have gone his way. It looked like early on in that fight, he was just going to knock Baluta out. He had him over a couple of times, and he was blitzing him. Then he says he hurt his hand, and you know I saw his hand afterwards. It didn't look in great shape, and it went Baluta's way. And Baluta is just a tough, tough man as well. And uh, you end up in a, a tough place where Baluta's just sort of raining down on you. You don't want to be in that slot. But this is a chance for Andrew Kane. By the way, that was up at Super Bantam. He's coming down to Bantam now. That seems to be where his future is. So Andrew Kane, get back in there, make a bit of a statement, and then probably look across at someone like Ash Lane, who is the British champion, the Commonwealth champion, and he probably fancies a bit of that. But he needs to get it right on Saturday, show everyone that he's back. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Definitely, and it's fair to mention Kane Baluta was probably one of the best fights I've ever yeah, seen live. It was incredible. Um, I do want to touch on Monday's press conference, Dev. I mean, better be F. Bivol, Queensby match from 5v5. I mean, I was there. It was it was crazy, to say the least. But, I mean, how did you find it being on the top table with everyone and even your best friend, Arta Betterbeev, as well? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Even I saw him like on the Tuesday as well, like, Betterbeev, like, hello, my friend, how are you, sort of thing. Like, this, what, That's him saying it to me. I was like, OK, why don't you say it yesterday out there? Mm. But, um, like, he's a... Look, he's a a cool, cold character. Um, I, I like that about his character. I know people saying, oh, we only gave you one or two word answers. That's all he really does. And he said enough. Uh, he said the thing about ask him why the fight didn't happen. That's why I asked that question, because I knew he'd say, ask him. And then it's up to Bivol to kind of respond. And the, what was the other thing he said? Like, oh, he knows. He knows something. He knows for sure. It's like, that's got people thinking, what does he know? What is it? Have they had a spa? They were they all around each other, you know, have they been in the ring or does Baturbiev know that Bivol's been done in sparring or something like that? All of those sort of questions arise. So 
I, I, I quite enjoyed it, and it was you know it's a privilege to be up there on stage, that big undisputed belt behind, and uh, you know the the eyes of the world media on that unprecedented fight that we've all been wanting for years and years. De- definitely, mate, as well. And Roberta Duran bringing out the belt as well, which was which was it. It was it was crazy. I think Ellie Scottney was buzzing meeting him backstage as well. Yeah. I mean, Queens we match from five v five, Dev. I mean, it, the card is ridiculous. But what is your pick of the bunch out of those five fights? So, in terms of the, I think they're all absolutely brilliant. You're absolutely right. Um, the one that in my head, I just can't, I can't get it out of my head is when that first bell rings and you see Deontay Wilder on one side with all these questions around him as to whether or not the bronze bomber still exists and you see D- you see Zile Zhang on the other side and you know when, when that first bell rings he's going to crash his gloves together and just walk right towards Wilder that that gets me going I like that and I because I, I think they're two of they might be the two biggest punches in boxing right now mm. if not there's certainly two of the top three four five because they can both crack and you know that Deontay Wilder's record shows that and Big Bang even though he lost against Joe Parker had him over a couple of times as well he's a uh, I just don't know what's going to happen in that fight, other than Shiloh Zhang winning because he's representing Queensbury. Definitely, and also Deontay, Deontay Wilder's matchroom captain as well. So that was yeah. so that was so that was very inter- interesting pick by uh, Mr. Hearn as well on the top table. The other couple couple of cards that Frank Warren and TNT have announced. I mean, in my opinion, it's a cracker on May the 11th. But uh, Denzel Bentley versus Danny Dingham and Nathaniel Collins' return, and then in my opinion, the fight of the night, uh, Ryan Garner versus Liam Dillon. Mm. I mean, sum up that card for me with just those three fights announced so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. It's, it's great. It's great to see what. Um, so Denzel Bentley, after the loss to Nathan Heaney, he's kind of in this place where he doesn't want to come back against journeymen, doesn't want to rebuild, doesn't want the confidence boosting or anything like that. He wants a proper fight. I spoke to Danny Dignam. Danny Dignam's talking about how I need to win this fight, otherwise I'll probably jack it in. So that that for me was quite a shocking statement to hear that he's thinking about that. He's only got one loss on his resume to to Yannibek, right? Um, so it means a lot to Danny Dignam, means an awful lot to Denzel Bentley. It's a cracking fight to headline. And uh, yeah, I mean, the other fights are brilliant as well. Ryan Garner, he's, he's been waiting for a breakout moment. Uh, this is an opportunity for that. A lot of the opponents he's faced so far, people haven't really heard of them. They've heard of Liam Dillon. They know what he can do. So Garner making a statement there would, uh, would be a statement. Definitely, and I'm looking forward to see the Ghanaian flags in uh, yeah. your corner Saturday. It's one of, one of the best things is that he has flags of Ghana brought by his fans, not because he's from Ghana, but because his name is Ghana. I love it. It's hilarious. I feel like it's one of the one of the funniest things you yeah. pointed out on thing. Also, uh, Cash in the Attic. That's my personal yeah. personal <laughs> favourite of yours. There, he just didn't get it though, did he? I think that's what made it absolutely yeah. funnier as well. My final one. We have to talk about Fury Usyk, May the eighteenth. I mean, cracking fight. And despite despite getting, I don't know where the criticism is coming from, but a fantastic undercard as well, May the eighteenth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, on the criticism of the undercard, I've seen more criticism that there has been criticism about the undercard than actual criticism of the undercard is. So. Uh, I haven't actually seen many people having a go at it. It's a terrific undercard. The fight that stands out for me is uh, you've got two unbeaten heavyweights, two 24-0 heavyweights. Not enough people really talk about this because the big heavyweight fight is the ultimate one, but Ajit Kabayel, 24-0 against Frank Sanchez. I mean, you you forgot, didn't you? Against Frank Sanchez, also 24-0. I mean, they're fighting for to get the attention of the world that week. They're going to struggle, but if they do a job on each other, they that, they become a serious, serious contender. Um, normally, fighters like that they go their separate route, etc., and then they wouldn't really fight at this point. But they are, and it's uh, it's brilliant. Cordina Kakachi, fantastic fight. A couple of world titles on the line there. Uh, Moses Italma's back. It's it's just it's just brilliant. Definitely, and I forgot that. That's a WBC final eliminator, I think, so massive ramifications for the winner. But, but Dev Sonny, that was my final one. Any final words to this massive massive kind of five weeks ahead for Queensbury and TNT Sports? Just, just stick with us, keep watching. I mean, uh, look, there's been a lot of big announcements and big stuff going on, but Saturday night on TNT Sports, 7.45, that's, it's the core of boxing. It's why we love it. It's these young fighters who can who are trying to get to those top tables, trying to get to the very top and see if they can do it. Sam Noak, if he goes 14 and 0, 14 knockouts, it's quite a statement. So uh, yeah, tune in. It definitely is. We look forward to seeing it. Def Sani, thank you very All much, right. mate. Cheers. Nice.